Today, the session is about equity. Equity probably is the easiest topic. What is equity? It is the difference between assets and liabilities. If you have assets of 100 and 60 of liabilities, then the difference is 40. That is how much a shareholder is worth today at the minimum, if they were to liquidate. Normally, equity is what you invest to start the business and the profits that you make during the life of the company. So if you have invested 100 to start a company and profits you have made in the last three years is another 50, then the equity of the company is 150. This video is even more boring than the previous ones, sorry, because there's a bunch of legal concepts on top of the accounting ones. In most of the modern world, registering of a company with the government means that you have to specify an ownership system through shares. Such shares gives you access to profits, to vote for business decisions, and to get assets upon liquidation, among other things. The share ownership system is how companies are set up, even within families. As said before, we have two sources of equity, one that is invested and one that is earned. The invested component comes from common stock and also from preferred stock. Preferred stock is normally non-voting and comes with a dividend. We also have paid in capital, which is a legal requirement in many places. If you buy back shares, then these are called treasury shares. Issuing stock is simple. You increase cash and equity. But there are caveats. Some countries have a par system. This par system is traditionally what we put on the piece of paper on which we print the common stock. Historically, shares that were printed had to have a stated value, as it was often interchangeable with cash. Now, no one uses paper anymore. In fact, I have not seen a paper for common stock for the past 25 years. It is all electronic. But the tradition still exists to have a par value. This par value is put at a minimum. So if you issue shares for $500,000, then under equity, you have to allocate it to both common stock at par and the rest is to paid in capital. If the par value is $1, then the common stock for 10,000 shares is $10,000 and the rest of the 490,000 is accounted for under paid in capital. If you're an equity holder, you are entitled to dividends. From the company's point of view, if you declare dividends, the accounting is done by reducing equity and increasing liabilities. When you pay out the dividends, CFF is reduced, cash is reduced, and the liability that you booked in the previous time period needs to be canceled. Essentially, when you pay dividends, the company has less cash. When the company has less cash, it is poorer, so equity is less. Please note, when you pay dividends, we do not reduce the income statement. The company did not have a poor performance. The income statement records your selling transactions, so essentially how many cars you sold. It does not record if the company pays out cash to owners. That would not be an income item. We also have stock dividends. These are non-cash dividends, essentially more paper to owners. If you own 100 shares and they make a 10% dividend, now you'll have 110 shares. The accounting entry for a small stock dividend is to reduce retained earnings and to increase common stock and paid in capital. In the case of large stock dividends, which is more than 20% of the total float, you reduce retained earnings and increase the par value of common stock.